Hey, it's Tom from WPWithTom.com, and in this video, I'll be going over the Divi blog module. So before we dive into the tutorial here, I just wanted to quickly say that I have an affiliate link below that will get you at least 10% off Divi if you don't already have it, and that is WPWithTom.com slash Divi. And I also just wanted to mention that I'll be posting these Divi module tutorials regularly on my channel here, so be sure to subscribe if that's something you want to see. So with this quick intro out of the way, let's dive into the Divi blog module. So in this example here, I'm going to be using a layout pack that comes within Divi, and this one is for a copywriter. So I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to add in a blog section. I'll just add it in right down here. So I'm going to go and click right here and add a new row. I'll just make it a one width row right here. And then I'm going to find the module that says blog right here and insert that module. And by default right here, it displays them as single posts and it says post count 10. So these are some big posts. I really don't like how that looks. So I'm going to just start off by going into where it says design in this tab going to layout and changing it from full width to grid. So now it will look a little bit better when we just have this grid section like this and you can see all six posts that my site has. So if you're wondering where these are pulling from, if we go back over to content and content again, it says post type posts right here and it's pulling these blog posts over here that we wrote and published in this section of the dashboard. So that is where these posts are coming from. So here I'm going to just choose six as the post count. I actually only have six anyway, but you can change that to display a different number. So let's just say you want it only three to show. You would change it to be three, and now it only shows your three most recent, and then it gives you older entries or older posts down below. I'm going to just make it six so it displays all of them, but that is how you would do that. And if you were to change what it says for the content length right here instead of excerpt and you wanted to do content it's going to show the whole long post in here it's going to look kind of funny like this so you can go and make this content if you want i'm going to just use excerpt here i think it just looks a lot better a lot more professional when you have it like this and then from here you can actually change the length of the excerpt so right now it says 270 characters by default if you wanted to change it to 200 you can do that and make it a little bit shorter or maybe you can make it something like 300 and make it a little longer just so you have an idea you can change that up and see what works for you and here if we go down a little bit i'm going to go into where it says elements next and here you can choose different features so you can choose to show this feature image or not and that's something you'd have to set up within the actual post back here so if we go in to edit this post and then once this loads, I'm going to go over on the right side and go to document. And this is the featured image that's displaying in the post. So that's this one right here for post six. You can choose if you want to show those or not. So you just toggle that on or off to show them. I think it looks a lot better with them on personally. You can choose to have a read more button or not. I'm going to go and add that one. I think that's a good one to have. And now you can see this read more button shows at the bottom. And then you can choose the author name. It says Tom's websites here the date right here and the categories. So I don't have any categories on these, so I'm just going to take that off and maybe I'll just take off the date as well. So right now it just says the post name, who is by and the content for the excerpt here and then read more. So once you're happy with that, you can go and save it if you want down here, but I'm going to actually go down to where it says background here under the content section. I'm just going to show you how to edit this background within the actual post itself. So if I were to click on this one right here, it edits this area. If you wanted to change the background for the whole entire area, so this white space and everything, you would use this down here. So let me just show you what that would look like. I really don't like the look of it overall, but you can just see if you were to change that, that would fill in that space there between. So I'm actually going to go right here and revert back and leave that as is. And I'm going to go up to where it says background. I'm just going to change this. And this site actually has a lot of orange all over it. So I'm just going to go and just save right here for now. And then I'm going to go click on this button and edit this one. Go over to design and then I'll go to button and I'll grab the text color right here. So I'm going to click on this and then I'll just simply copy it. And I'll X out of there since I didn't make any changes. And I'll go back down to here. Click on this icon to edit it. Go over to where it says background down here where we just were and then within this section I'll click on where it says grid background color 
and I'll just paste in that hex code and then it will change the background color for the site. Now I know it looks a little bit difficult to read, but I'm just trying to give you an option if this is something you want to do. And we'll go over to where it says design to make some more changes so you can read this text a little bit better. So over here we have different options. Let's go to overlay first. So if I turn this on this featured image overlay, you can see that it says icon overlay color and then overlay background color. And this is the one that I want to use, the overlay background color right here. If you see I go over it, it turns basically white when you go over it, you barely can see the image. That's because this is the color by default. Now let's go in here, I'm going to select black and then I'm going to go about halfway down, maybe slightly below halfway. And now when you hover over these images, you can see it turns a little bit darker. So that helps the user know that they're actually hovering over that specific one. If they were to click on this plus or this image up here, it would take them right to this post. So it would take them to post four in this example. So from here, I'm actually going to go down and edit a couple other things. I'll just close this overlay section and then I'll go down to where it says text. I'll actually go to title text first and that's where it says post four. You can change the font here as needed and the font weight. You can italicize it, change the alignment. I'm just going to go and make the title text a different color. I'll make it white and I'll make it a little larger. So you can change so many things here within the text. I'm not going to go through each of them. Body text though, I'll go down and I'll also make this one white. And I'll also go to where it says meta and I'll make that one white as well. So you can see all these are white. You might want to make them a little bit different colors, but I'm just trying to give you an example here. Now, if we go down to read more, read more is also white. I would want that to be a different color. Most of the time people like links to be blue and it will give them the hint. I think black will probably stand out a little bit more right here. And maybe you could bold this one or something like that. If you want it to be a little bit more obvious that that is the read more button. So that might be something you do is bold that one. And from here, you can actually go and make some more changes. So let's go down to where it says border. And in border, if we want to add some rounded corners here, we can just go and add like 15 or 20 pixels to this area. And you can see now it has these rounded corners on them. The more you go, the more rounded it's going to be or oval shape it's going to get. So if you were to go up here and let's just say we went to 100 and just see what it looks like, you can see it looks almost more pill shape or something like that. I'm just going to go and put it as 20 because I think it looks pretty good at like 15 or 20 range and it will do that for all sides. So if you don't want them all to be connected, you can go right here and you can change that and maybe you have this one as zero. So right here, this one has the corner and then this one has a corner, but this one up here does not. So that could be something that you want to do if you want to do a little bit different look. It's totally up to you. I'm just going to connect them all and make them 20 here just for this example. So if we want to go and continue on here, we can go down to box shadow and you can add a nice box shadow to this. So if you just click on this right here, you can see that we have this little shadow around it. I'll click off of it. Just look at the icons change around and it has that little shadow to it. If you wanted to, you can make it a little bit darker and I think it really can help the overall look of the site to have this added to it. And to be honest, I really like box shadows. I use them way too often probably, but it is a nice feature to change how the look and feel of the website is in my opinion, or at least the feature that you're working on. So down here, we also have another option that could be interesting to some of you out there. And this is the animation feature. So if you were to click on this one right here, you can actually see what the animation would look like and you can get a feel for what they would do. Some of these are a little obnoxious or over the top, I think. So I would tend to go and just use the fade one myself or no animation. But I like how that looks. If you want to change the duration, make it longer, you can make it more of a fading effect. I would probably only go to about 1500 milliseconds or 1.5 seconds because then it gets a little bit long, I think, and drawn out. You want the user to be able to see it pretty quickly, but it is nice if they see that effect. And you can also delay it if you want as well. So I'm just going to go and click save changes right here and save. And this is basically just some basic changes that you can make within the Divi blog module to style it a little bit without having to go too crazy just by using the design tab. Now this was an example with the orange. You might not want to use that on your own site, but it goes with the site colors here. And I thought it would be helpful to show you this. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video on the Divi blog module. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more Divi module related tutorials. Thanks for viewing and have a wonderful day.